It was a sad year for Brazilian giant Santos after the Alvinegro lost their great icon Pelé in late December 2022, hosting his funeral at the Villa Belmiro ground. Less than one year later, in 2023, the club suffered its first relegation in its 111-year history. Santos's relegation is a familiar theme in Brazilian football in recent seasons, with Internacional succumbing to their first relegation in 2016, with Cruzeiro doing the same in 2019. If football history has taught us anything, though, is that even the mighty can fall. Having your club demoted from one league to the other is a fan's biggest nightmare and can financially cripple a historically entrenched footballing establishment. Clubs will scramble to do anything they can to avoid the dreaded drop. However, some well-known institutions weren't fortunate enough to prevent the plunge. Welcome to Football Attitude's 11 shocking football relegations. Deportivo La Coruña, 2010-2011 after their surprise La Liga win in the 1999-2000 season, beating out the likes of Barcelona and Valencia, Deportivo La Coruña became one of Spain's best sides, featuring regularly in the Champions League and the latter stages of domestic competition. The seasons prior saw them grappling in mid-table, securing finishes ranging from 7th to 13th, including a 10th place position in 2009-10. In the 2010-2011 campaign, their 40th season in La Liga, Deportivo underwent a significant transformation, losing many of their key players. Despite winning 10 times in the league and amassing 43 points, they fell just one point short of safety as their relegation was confirmed on the final weekend of that season, marking an end to their earlier glory days. AS Monaco, 2010-2011 a couple of established sides dropped out of Ligue 1 that season, but the real shock was AS Monaco. They were Champions League finalists in 2004, but were hemorrhaging funds and spending cash they weren't making. When costs were cut, they were forced to rely on young talent and this inexperience weakened them, sending them out of the top flight in 2011. Monaco continued to struggle in Ligue 2 and were even bottom of the table when Russian billionaire Dmitry Rybolovlev bought them over in December that year. The next following couple of seasons saw them earn promotion back to the top flight in 2013. Smart business and development of their young talent culminated in them winning the Ligue 1 title in the 2016-17 season over perennial big spenders Paris Saint Germain, their first in 17 years. Since then, Monaco have always averaged a top 6 finish, although they almost surprisingly dropped back to the second tier at the end of a poor 2018-19 season, finishing 17th, just two points above the relegation zone. Villarreal, 2011-2012 Entering the 2011-12 season as a Champions League team, Villarreal finished fourth in a stacked La Liga the season before. They had a fantastic squad boasting formidable players like Marco Senna, Matteo Musacchio, Neymar, Giuseppe Rossi, and Borja Valero. Santi Cazola and Joan Capdevila were both sold in the summer, with the former sale to Malaga raising eyebrows given his talents. The Champions League journey proved challenging as Villarreal finished at the bottom of their group, failing to secure a single point in that season's group of death against opponents Bayern Munich, Manchester City, and Napoli. This lackluster performance spilled over to La Liga where they struggled throughout the season. With 15 defeats and only 9 wins, they accumulated a total of 41 points and could have narrowly missed avoiding relegation, finishing just one point behind 17th placed Granada. Villarreal's fate was sealed dramatically in the form of an 88-minute goal from Atletico Madrid's Radamel Falcao on the final day. They did manage to come straight back up the following year in 2013 under the guidance of new manager Marcelino. Corinthians, 2006-2007 In an effort to bring in significant investment, Corinthians signed a lucrative deal with Media Sports Investment in 2005 that allowed them to splash the cash on players like Carlos Tevez, Carlos Alberto, Gustavo Neri, and Javier Mascherano. The warning signs had actually been there for a while, even when the São Paulo Giants won the title in 2005, there were whispers of discontent in the boardroom. By then, Iranian agent and MSI president Kia Jurabchian was a major key player at the club and reportedly not on the best terms with the club's management. Within two years, the money had run out and they were forced to sell off many of their top stars, including Tevez and Mascherano. 
The club also ended up breaking their partnership with MSI amid the investment company's money laundering allegations. Needing to beat Gremio on the last day of the season, Corinthians only managed a draw and were dumped into the second tier for the first time in their illustrious history. It took two seasons for the club to return to the top flight and by 2011 they had reasserted themselves as one of Brazil's best by winning the title and then following it up with a win in the 2012 Copa Libertadores over Argentinian giants Boca Juniors. Atletico Madrid, 1999-2000 In the very same season that Deportivo won their first and only La Liga title, Atletico Madrid were relegated to the Segunda División alongside other prominent Spanish sides in Sevilla and Real Betis. In 1999, Athletic Club President Jesus Hill and the board were suspended pending investigation into the misuse of club funds with government-appointed administrator Luis Manuel Ruby placed to run the day-to-day -day operations at the club. With the removal of Hill, the club floundered and the players put in one disastrous performance after another. Atleti won just nine matches in the 38-game season under two different managers, Claudio Ranieri and Radomir Antic. Incredibly, they also finished runners-up in the Copa del Rey, losing out to Valencia. After two seasons in the second tier, Los Colchoneros would bounce back and become one of the three dominant sides in España alongside city rivals Real Madrid and Barcelona. Following 13 managers in 11 years, Argentinian Diego Simeone has been at the helm since the very tail end of 2011. Since 2012, they've consistently finished in the top three, winning the title in 2014 and as recently as 2021 while introducing some of the most exciting, potent attacking talent to a wider football audience. Manchester United, 1973-1974 Before the arrival of Alex Ferguson, the English giants were still trying to re-establish themselves as a top club in the top flight. Yes, there were a couple of FA Cup wins before Fergie, but the league title was all but a dream. Six years earlier in 1968, United had won the biggest prize in European club football after defeating Benfica 4-1 on a marvelous night at Wembley Stadium, but following manager Matt Busby's retirement in 1969, the club began to gradually slide down the table. The entire 1973-74 season was a nightmare and even George Best's return could not save them with the legendary winger exiting the club on New Year's Day in the team's late-season run of victories under manager Tommy Doherty raised hopes of survival but defeats to Manchester City and Stoke City left them hanging by a thread. The decisive blow came when former United player Dennis Law scored the winner for City in the Manchester derby, contributing to United's 21st place finish. Contrary to popular belief, it wasn't their bitter Sky Blue rivals who relegated them by way of Law's backheel but Birmingham City's win and a draw to West Ham that confirmed United's descent. Despite relegation, Doherty retained his position and United would be promoted the following season in 1975 after winning the second division. It would take nearly 20 years though before the Red Devils would win another league title which happened to be in the first Premier League season of 1992-93. Olympique Marseille, 1994-1995 at the time, Marseille were European champions and the most expensive outfit ever assembled in France. Regardless of their Champions League triumph, the club were forcibly relegated by the French football authorities after they were caught in a match-fixing bribery scandal. The scandal led to the 1992-93 Ligue 1 title being stripped off Marseille and awarded to second place PSG who declined and as a result, no team was classed as winning the title that season. The bribery took place during the match between Valenciennes and Marseille on the 20th of May 1993. The president of Marseille, Bernard Tabier, and general manager Jean-Pierre Banet contacted members of the Valenciennes squad and asked them to underperform in the match so that Marseille could be fresh for their Champions League final clash with AC Milan six days later. Despite the forced relegation to Ligue 2, Marseille remarkably recovered and were promoted back to the top flight the following season where they have managed to remain ever since. FC Schalke, 2020-2021 Schalke were one of Germany's biggest teams, routinely finishing in the Champions League spots and progressing fairly well through Europe's biggest tournaments. Fast forward to the 2021-22 season and the club found itself embarking on its first Bundesliga Zwei campaign in over three decades. The descent was not immediate, with Schalke finishing 14th and 12th in the seasons preceding their relegation. This marked only the fourth occasion that the club experienced relegation from the top flight and the team underwent a tumultuous period financially with five different managers taking the helm. Klasian Huntela, Seyad Kolasinac, and Shkrodan Mustafi were brought in during the season, but their efforts proved futile. 
Ultimately, Schalke concluded the season with a mere 16 points from 34 games, trailing 17 points behind the relegation playoff spot and managing only three wins throughout the campaign. The club bounced straight back up but faced another relegation during their return to the Bundesliga and have struggled to get going in the second tier, languishing in mid-table. Leeds United, 2003-2004 as champions of the final first division season in 1991-92, Leeds were one of the inaugural 22 clubs of the newly established Premier League, the breakaway top flight competition formed in 1992. The chairmanship of Peter Ridsdale and his financial ambition helped build a club that sustained success in the league throughout the 90s and they even made it all the way to the UEFA Champions League semi-final in the 2000-2001 season. The club invested heavily, bringing in players such as Mark Biduka, Rio Ferdinand, Robbie Fowler and Robbie Keane as they pushed for honours, but after two successive failures to qualify for the Champions League, the club endured financial crisis. Leeds had to make the drastic decision of selling the top players as they could no longer sustain the debt repayments, which relied on ticket sales and television income. The club's 14-year stay in the top flight ended after relegation followed in 2004, and after a few seasons in the championship, they eventually sunk into the third tier of English football. At the end of the 2009-10 season, Leeds were promoted back to the championship after a final day victory and would remain there for a decade until they finally earned and promotion back to the Premier League in 2020 under the tactically astute management of Marcelo Bielsa. Juventus, 2005-2006 With a team stacked with icons such as Alessandro Del Piero, Fabio Cannavaro, Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Pavel Nedved, Juventus romped to their 20th league title in the 2005-06 season. However, before they could uncork the champagne, the club was sensationally embroiled in one of the biggest scandals in the history of Italian and European football. In late July 2006, a few weeks after the Italian national team's World Cup triumph in Germany, Juve were found guilty of influencing referee appointments and overall match fixing. As part of the Calciopoli scandal that also implicated AC Milan, Fiorentina, Lazio and Regina, Juventus was dumped into Serie A for the 2006-07 season. They were also stripped off two Serie A titles, the one they won the previous season and this particular season, which was awarded to second-placed Inter. Many prison sentences were handed out to sporting directors and match officials, but after almost a decade of investigation, all were acquitted in 2015 due to the expiration of the statute of limitations except for a one-year sentence served by referee Massimo De Santis. Juventus would return to the top flight after one season and eventually reasserted their dominance in Serie A, winning nine consecutive league titles. River Plate, 2010-2011 one of the biggest outfits in world football, never mind South America, River Plate boasted an incredible 33 league titles going into the 2010-2011 campaign and had won more than any other club in the country. After a remarkable 110 years in Argentina's top division, La Banda spiraled out of control. Suffering through a financial crisis that left the Buenos Aires club over $75 million in debt, River was staring in the ugly face of relegation after finishing at the bottom of the league. They ironically nicknamed Los Millonarios, or the Millionaires, then went on to lose a two-legged playoff against promotion hopefuls Belgrano de Cordoba at the end of the 2011 season to confirm their relegation for the first time in their long and proud history. The club would bounce back from this catastrophe by winning the Primera Ba Nacional title the following season to unback promotion. They have since captured a record 38th Primera División title in 2023 after a decade of re-establishing themselves as one of Argentina's top sides, but the mental scars from that horrific season will remain with the fans for a long time.